I'm going to make a statement right off the bat. And uh, I hope you're with me. There's not one sign that has to happen before the rapture can happen. Amen? Yes. Nothing has to happen. Now, but though I say that, we are, would you agree, seeing things, signs that are actually going to happen during the tribulation period, starting to come right before our face. And this, this thing that's going on in our world, the Bible tells us in the last day, there's two nations that are going to have prominence in last day things, one being Russia and one being China. Now, I want you to know something, and I, I beg any of you to come and teach me if you want to, but I can't find the United States in the Bible. I don't know if that means we're going to go down to tubes. I don't have a clue. All I do know is that bear from the north and that one in the east, they're roaring. And you said, why? Yeah, and some of my, uh, let me, let me uh, just slow down a little. Some of my Baptist preachers back in 1990 in that area when Russia, they tore the wall down. They, they gave up on prophecy about Russia. What they didn't understand is that God knows all about it. Somebody say amen. amen. And uh, now that bear is more lethal. And that man that's leading them, I don't know if he'll be the last day Russian leader, but he fits the script. And I want y'all to know something. It wouldn't surprise me at all if we just hear the trumpet right now. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me right now that the Lord Jesus would come back tonight. Wouldn't that be great? Amen. Let me ask you something. If he came back tonight, are you ready? Amen. Now you say, Preacher Smith, I'm saved. I, well, you can be saved and not ready. Amen? Amen? Are you ready? And tonight, I, I'm going to be uh, launching some more stuff to add to what I preach Sunday. But I want to start out with rapture ready. And let me give you some verses in the Bible. Let's just read some verses. And some of them, most of them you've read and, and uh, you understand. So uh, let me read some verses to you. I, I may... I may uh, let me, let me start at Revelation 4. Hold your hand in 1 Thessalonians. A lot of people ask me, where is the rapture in Revelation? And I'll be dealing with this passage extensively tonight. So turn to Revelation chapter number 4. When you get there, say Amen. I got three points tonight. I'm not going to give a lot of introduction. I'm just going to go right to my sermon. And the first point will be the, the smallest point and the least significant point. But I want to show you this and point this out. Look at Revelation chapter number four. After this, I looked. After what? After the church age. If you read Revelation chapter number one, it gives you an outline. The things that are. Uh, uh, the things that were and the things that are and the things that shall be hereafter. Right. And the church, there were seven of them, which I believe is a picture, somebody help me preach, of the sevenfold manifestation of the church and the completeness of the church age. Right. Now, if you read Revelation chapter 2 and 3, you'll hear this seven times, this, this phrase mentioned. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Can I bog down there? Is it okay for me to bog down and just run a rabbit or two? Sure. Hey, by the way, 
We need to be listening right now to the Holy Ghost. There's a lot of people tonight that don't want to use that word Holy Ghost, but this preacher is going to preach on the Holy Ghost tonight. We need the Holy Ghost power, and the Holy Ghost spoke to the church seven times. Mentioned seven times. But if you go from Revelation 4 to Revelation 19, that phrase is not there any longer. But this phrase is, he that hath an ear, let him hear. You say, what do you mean? Why why isn't the rest of it there? I'll, I'll tell you why. Doesn't need to be there because the church is gone. Somebody help me preach. <laughs> the church is delivered. The church is raptured. I'll tell you what, I'm going to stick with it. I don't care how many Reformed theologists. I don't care how many Calvinists. I don't care how many of these lunatics try to preach something else. How many post millennials, all millennials, and everything uh, other than these pan guys. You say, what is a pan millennials? That's everything will pan out. I don't care what they say. I'm a pre-trib rapturous. I'm glad God's coming after the church. Let me show you where it's at. After this, what? After what? After the church, I looked up. Behold, a door was opened in heaven. And I want you to really remember these verses because I'm going to read another section that you it'll sound very familiar. I looked up, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you thing, these things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he that sat was to look like, upon like a jasper and sardine stone. And there was a rainbow around about the throne in the sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting. Now notice what the, oh glory. Clothed in white raiment. Hold your finger there. I know you got a lot of fingers in a lot of places, so hang in there. Turn to one more place. Turn over to Revelation 19. I got over there real quick. Oh, hurry, hurry, hurry. And verse number seven. Revelation 19 and verse seven. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife had made herself ready. Now notice what it said over here. Revelation 4, she had white raiment. Now notice. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. <laughs> well, glory. Somebody say amen. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. You say, well, where did that come from? How'd they get the, the robe and how'd they get the crowns? Well, they, they've already had the judgment seat. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. They've already had the judgment seat. They had been presented as a chaste virgin before the Lord, getting married ready. Somebody say amen. amen. You know, some of you ought to shout tonight. You know what? God's going to rapture us out of here. Amen. We're going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ, and I'll get into that a little bit, a little bit more tonight, a positive side of it. And, and we're going to stand before God, and then we're going one of these days, we're going to get married, and we're going to have a supper. I'm looking forward to your wedding. Amen. I'm looking, uh, Anthony, I'm looking forward to seeing you cry at the altar here soon. And uh, uh, Brother O'Brien, I'm watching you weep a little bit too. 
Uh, and they're going to be wonderful occasions. But there ain't nothing like the marriage of the Lamb and the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. How many of y'all, when you got married, you had a honeymoon? Raise your hand. Mine was a little delayed, but I got one. How about a thousand-year honeymoon? Amen. Right. You and I are, whoa, glory. <laughs> that makes me want to preach. We're going to have a thousand-year honeymoon. Right. Thank God for that. Now go back again to 1 Thessalonians. Let me read a corresponding passage of Scripture. I, I just want to spend a moment on this, Brother Jeff, because I got a lot of good stuff I want to give you all tonight, and I don't want to bold myself down. But let's turn back to 1 Thessalonians 4. You'll, you'll notice that they sound very similar uh, with the reading of Revelation 4. If you're there, say amen. amen. But I would not have you to be ignorant. Now, I don't want to be ugly, though I may come across that way. There is a lot of ignorance when it comes to the second coming of Christ the rapture of the church, the judgment seat of Christ, there are absolutely a lot of ignorance. I don't know why people just don't take the word of God for what it says. Somebody help me preach. I would not have you ignorant, brother, concerning what? Them which are asleep, that you sorrow not. Now, I, I do not believe in soul sleep. Look at me. And if you do, you're wrong. No. When you die, your soul and spirit, the real you, is heading up. Amen. And what's sleeping is your body. Right. Amen. It's corrupting. Now, I don't want you to be ignorant. These, these Thessalonians were ignorant about death and the coming of the Lord. That you saw or not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say un, unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven Amen. with a shout with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, how many's got a loved one that's passed over? Have you thought about the rapture and the resurrection and y'all all, all of us going up together? Somebody ought to get happy about that. Amen. Praise God. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the rapture. That's not the second coming. That's when we meet him in the air. Seven years later, he's bringing us back to the earth. And our feet will land, and his feet will land on the Mount of Olives, and it'll cleave. Right. Whew. Somebody ought to get excited. Right. Now, that's, that's really, I didn't want to go much deeper than that tonight because that's really not what I want to preach on. Number one, we see the coming. You rapture ready? But number two, I want you look at the verse, then I want you to turn in your Bible. You might not be able to see it on the wall. The confidence. Now, a whole lot of people, when I start preaching on the, on the judgment seat of Christ Sunday, they get real spooked. Come on now. Because they don't really understand it. Let me tell y'all something so I can make this plain. He judged their sin at Calvary. Judicially speaking, judicially speaking, not practically speaking, Judicially speaking, we stand righteous before him. And we're going to heaven. But make no doubt about it. From the day you say to the day he comes after you, we'll have to give an account. 
Amen. Amen. Yes, now, and there's two extremes. There's a liberal, loose, limp judgment seat right. teaching. And I am not one of them. Then there is the extreme right wing crazy thing. There are some, some Baptists that believe that if you're not faithful, you're going to spend a thousand years with the devil in the bottomless pit. Now, let me tell all y'all that's foolishness. And there's no scripture in that. And there's no Bible for it. And they poke a verse here and a verse here and they're out of their mind. But see, because there's two extremes, that doesn't mean we ought not be ready for the coming of Christ. And let me give you this verse. Turn to 1 John chapter 2 and verse 28. When you get there, say amen. Once you go there. I personally believe that when the Lord comes, we can be confident. It does not have to be a scary thing. Now, I will read a verse of Scripture in a moment that this event can be scary. And I'm going to read that in a moment. But it doesn't have to be scary. Somebody help me preach. Are you at 1 John 2.28? If you're there, say amen. amen. Listen to this. And now, little children, that's us. That's children of God. Abide in him. Abide in Christ. That when he shall appear, when he comes, if he comes right now, amen, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Amen. Listen to me. I believe if you live right, somebody help me preach, and you live the way God wants you to, a saved separated life, a life that's trying to get people saved, you can be confident when it comes. Amen. It don't have to be a negative thing. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. It will be negative for some people. If you're not abiding in Christ and not living for the Lord, and when it comes, it's going to be, hey, you'll be ashamed. Sure. But it doesn't have to be that way. Now, before I give you the last point, that's the one I want to give you tonight. Lord, my time's, where's the time going, Chad? Whew. I'm trying. Turn to, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. I'm going to read one verse here. And then move on to the last point because that's the one I want to teach some things tonight to give you an idea of those rewards in a moment. If you're there, say amen. First Corinthians, or Second Corinthians chapter 5, you're there, say amen. amen. Go to verse, now look at context, ladies and gentlemen. Go to verse 10. If you're there, say amen. amen. I want everybody to say I, amen. I want you to be there. Now, for we must, somebody say those three letters, all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that which he had done, whether it be good or bad. Amen. That goes right back to what I preached to you Sunday night. The good is gold, precious stones. The bad is wood, hay, and stubble. The good comes from the new man. The bad comes from the old man. Say amen. Now, notice the next verse. The next verse is connected to this verse. It's not an arbitrary verse. It's connected to this verse. It is talking about this event. It's not talking. Some people say, well, that's hell. He's talking, no, 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 no. You're out of context if you say that's hell. That's not hell. Hell's going to be bad, but this is not talking about hell. 
I may help me preach. Knowing therefore what? The terror of the Lord. We persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. You know what Paul said? Look here. You want to know why I preach the way I preach? You want to know why I preach the way I preach? Every one of us. Your preacher, my job is to persuade every one of you to live right. Amen. So that, so that when he comes, you can go there in confidence. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Now, somebody say amen. When, if you go up at the rapture, you're in a good stead because that means you ain't going to the white throne judgment. Somebody help me preach. Amen. But ladies and gentlemen, Paul was saying this event, and I don't know, I don't know how it's going to be done, and don't quote me to say how it's going to be done. I don't know how it's going to be done. I don't know if everybody's going to see everybody's. I don't have a clue. But I do know the fire is going to declare our works. And you know what Paul was saying? I'm pleading with every one of you. Live right. I'm pleading with everyone. We are living in a day, and it scares me, of superficial, shallow Christianity. I, I'm serious. Superficial and shallow. The Christianity I'm seeing is built on people, built on manipulators. Uh, hey, by the way, it's not always a bunch of highs and a bunch of shouting, though I believe in shouting. But Christianity is living for Christ, Amen. suffering for Christ, Amen. doing his work. Amen. I'm going to help me. Amen. Now, amen. You said, how can I be confident? Well, number one, get saved. Number two, be separated. Why don't we preach that anymore? Come on. I'm not preaching legalism. Right. Come on, what? Y'all know me better than that. Well, oh, Lord, that was the rapture. You ain't ready. <laughs> I'm not preaching legalism. But I do believe you ought to live holy Amen. as he is holy. Amen. 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 And then we ought to be confident that we're saved, that we're separated, that we're serving. Now, I will give you the last point, and this is really what I wanted to teach you, and I got 14 minutes to do it. And if I don't cover it, I'm coming back next week. Amen, amen. amen Bill Winkler. Yeah. Coming back next week. Because <laughs> I want you to learn. How many remember them crowns I mentioned? Yeah. I tell you why you have a lot of ignorance about the appearing before Christ is you don't understand it. And you don't understand the nature of the crowns. And if you'd understand the nature of the crowns, you'd understand the nature of the judgment. Somebody help me preach. Now, let me give you the five crowns. Uh, you go in your Bible once you follow me, and I'm going to give them to you tonight. How many of you want to give him, get a crown? Is it important to you? It ought to be. Because it'd be real embarrassing if you get up there and you don't have any. Because I'm going to show you in a moment, if you go back to Revelation 4 and verse 10, we're going to take them off and throw them at his feet. Amen. Wouldn't you hate to be there and not have any? Yeah, sure. Go in empty-handed. How many believe we don't have to go in empty-handed? Yeah, Somebody help me preach. Let's look at these crowns. I'll give you an overview. Number one, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. This is what is called the incorruptible crown. All right, you're going to earn this crown, right, Lois? We're going to earn this. How do we earn it? What do we do? What do we not do? Let me show you. Are you there? Know ye not, verse 24, that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that you may obtain. 
And let every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. Those that would go to the crimp and to that bema seat, they did it for a corruptible crown. But we, an incorruptible, look what Paul said, I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep, here's the crown, here it is, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any means when I preach to others, I myself be a castaway. Now, look at me. Or castaway doesn't mean be lost. Somebody help me. Castaway means disapproved. Paul said, wouldn't it be terrible that I preach to everybody then stand before God and be disapproved? So what is the judgment? What is the crown? It's an incorruptible crown keeping your body under subjection. Now, a lot of folks ain't like, 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 don't want to like hearing this. I know they ain't going to like hearing this, Allison. But you know, Paul mentions a lot in Corinthians. How many's read 1 Corinthians? He mentions over and over fornication. He also mentioned drunkenness. Drinking. He does. You know, I'm going to say this, and I'm not being ugly. Don't you dare go out of this room and call me a legalist for saying this because I'm not. There's too many Christians that drink. Amen. Amen, preacher. You're right. Amen. You're right, and they try to justify it. Absolutely. Right. And whether you like it or not, that will go through the fire. Absolutely. Now, I know. People ain't going to like me too much because I'm preaching that. I'm not trying to be ugly. But also fornication. Look at all that stuff going on. Everything. They have a toothpaste commercial and it's sexual. Somebody help me preach. See, what I'm saying is, and too much of that stuff's going on in the house of God with people that says they're saved. There ain't no way in the world you could be confident that he's coming if you got that kind of stuff in your lifestyle and you know if he comes, you're going to have to give an account. You say, well, I just don't agree with you about social drinking and I don't agree with you about this and I don't agree with you. That's okay. Wine's a mocker, strong drink is raging. Somebody help me preach. And I know it's not preached very much. And don't you dare send me a hate letter unless you're going to sign it. Amen. 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 But we're going to stand. But you don't have, we don't have to go up there. We need, sure. if you live right. Sure. I'm not worried about that part. I'm trying to live a Christian life. Amen. Am I perfect? No. Did I say I was? No. Amen. But I'm trying to keep my body under subjection. How many understand that? Yeah. So, you see how it'll happen, right? That part of your life will go through the fire. If, you, if it stands, you get a reward. If it burns, you suffer loss. But let me tell you something. If we really believe the judgment seat the way the Bible t- teaches it, how many of you think we would live differently? If we really knew that we were going to stand before God. Boys, am I helping? I'm doing a good spirit. Am I doing this in a good spirit? I hope I I am. I'm not trying to be ugly. Hey, listen, man, I got enough mess in my own life. This, This crown is called a victor's crown. But let's not stay there. I want to give you that one. Let's go to the next one. I want to hurry. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 19 and 20. Now, we have one of our missionaries, Allison Stan, will you? 
I'm saying, I'm going to point her out for a reason. Allison has devoted her life to full-time ministry and getting the gospel out in the printed page. Amen? Her daddy was saved because somebody gave him a gospel track. Amen? Amen? So let me show you something. You say, well, I, I can't do a lot in church. Well, let's look at this verse. How many is there? First Thessalonians 2, 19, 20. If you're there, say amen. amen. For that, what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not, are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For ye are our glory and our joy. This is the soul winner's crown. Somebody help me preach. Ladies and gentlemen, every one of you in this room, you don't have to have a college education. You don't have to have a PhD to win somebody to Christ. I'll tell you what you can do. A lot of times you can just give your own testimony, throw in John 3, 16, and a few verses in Romans, and lead anybody to Christ. You can take one of them tracks. You know what? I really believe if you really want to be a soul winner and you'd like to get one of them crowns, what in the world? This church pays big money for them tracks back there, and they're not back there in that place to gather dust. They're there to give us that we can have it as a tool. You may not be able to talk to anybody, but you might have a track out and they get saved. And by the way, what a great crown. Thank God. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. How many believe that's a great crown? Amen. And that's not too hard for anybody. Sure. But I want you to know something. In this liberal, emotional field Christianity and American Christianity, soul winning has went out the window. Churches don't even do confrontation so winning anymore. It's not pooch by preachers anymore. I want to tell you, we was, at, uh, we was at lunch today. Marguerite got to go, and the boys, and Marguerite, we ate. She wanted to be a testimony, and Allison makes some good tracks about when you go out to eat to give the gospel, when you give a tip. Now, don't give no track if you don't give no tip. Don't embarrass me because our name's on that thing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But that's a good way to witness. Right. You say, I'm too shy. What do you ain't too shy to hand somebody something? Right. And maybe it'll get a conversation. And may have you ever really ever won anybody to Christ? And by the way, he that wins souls is wise. Right. Well, let me give you a third one. That's whew, am I going too fast? Am I okay? Turn to 2 Timothy 4, 8. The third one is the crown of righteousness. Now, if I wanted to, I could preach these one sermon at a time. I don't want to do that. But I, want to, I at least want to give you these. The Bible said, Paul said this. Henceforth, he said, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. You know the scripture. He says, henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not only to, not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Right. Now, you might say, well, I love, I, love, I, love, I love his appearing. Easy, easy. Why is it a crown of righteousness, Jeff? If we really believe he's coming, how many of y'all believe we be living different? We be living righteously. So what I'm saying is, I'll be honest with you, I know I ain't perfect, and I know I'll have some things burn the fire. Guilty. But don't be judging me too much because you're going there too, buddy. <laughs> but I thank God that I'm looking for him. I'm trying to live like I'm looking for him. Somebody help me preach. Let me give you a fourth one since my time's fleeting. Are y'all following me? Yeah. Hope you're writing these verses down. Yeah. 
The fourth one is a, the crown of life. Now, this is a little difficult to understand, so I'm going to try to explain. It's mentioned in two passages, and so I'll show you both passages. James 1.12, blessed is the man that endure temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love his appearing. That's the first uh, mention of it. The second mention of it is found in Revelation 2.10. Fear not, or fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days, but be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give thee a crown of life. The crown of life is the martyr's crown. The crown of life is for somebody that endures trials and tribulation and testing. And listen to this. Notice this. Notice it does not, it does not say until death, but unto death. Amen? Amen? I want you to know something. It wouldn't hurt some of us. Before we start complaining about our Christianity, to go read Fox's Book of Martyrs. Go read John Bunyan's book on martyrs. You might have a different appreciation. I want to tell you one of these days, those that's laid down their life for the cause of Christ and kept faithful to the end are going to get a crown of life. Somebody help me preach. I, uh, Chad, uh, Oh, I, I see my time. I got to quit. But Chad uh, put a tweet on the other day. I liked it. He, uh, who was the guy you mentioned? Uh, uh, Martz? That was drowned? You can't remember. You, you can't remember your tweet, but I can. But a man was drowned in 1,500-something. And by the way, when I read that on Chad's tweet, when I went to Israel in 1985, I came back from, to Switzerland. And Switzerland was a, where there was a great martyrdom. And by the way, it wasn't done by the Catholics. It was done by the Puritans and the Reformers. They killed many of our Baptist brethren and buried them in the water. And that man, what's his name, Chad? You there yet? That man, that certain man, huh? Felix Mance. Felix Mance. I was right there at the river where Felix Mance was drowned for the cause of Christ. And we said in our luxury, You're right. and we say sometimes, oh, this is so hard. We don't know what hard is. Amen. Somebody help me preach. Hard is, and by the way, though, I think before the Lord comes, some of us are going to face that kind of persecution. And I wonder if we're going to stand. I'm done with this. I know I'm two minutes over. Let your heart not be troubled. Then I want to give you the last one, the elder or pastor crown. It's found, it's found in 1 Peter chapter 5. And by the way, that's crown for people like me. And the Bible said, feed the flock of God is among you, taking the oversight, not by constraint, but willingly, not a filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as law, uh, being lords over the heritage, but being an example to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. You know, God, I hope I get that crown. I want that crown. And by the way, there's a, I ain't gonna lie to you, there's a lot of mean preachers and I know I preach hard. But I want all y'all to know something. I love you. I am not a bitter man. And you know that. But I am trying to get us all to live close. Bow your head with me. How many learned something tonight? Raise your hand. How many tonight? I want to make sure if you're not saved, I want to make sure. If you're not saved, just slip up your hand and say, Preacher, I'm not saved. I'm not sure I'm ready for the coming of Christ. And I want to be bold at the coming 
pray for me. Anybody lost? Amen. I tell you, I'm not going to, I think everybody say, I'm not going to give a formal altar call. How many of you will take what you hear or heard tonight and go home around your altar and just pray about how you can be a better Christian? Just raise your hand. Amen. I believe all of us ought to want to stand. We'll dismiss.